I am here with our friend Polo, who suggested why don't we try BackRabbit? BackRabbit has the capability of checking for hashes, and since we also have Sysmon installed in the machine that we are going to be detonating the malware with, we should be able to get, not, get not nice hashes that should trigger some particular offenses. This uh, let's actually try this out. So we have a control environment here in which we uh, detonate the actual malware and let's actually go into the log activity tab and we have a filter here associated with offense and we already started to see that <laughs> this seems to be working very well. Look at this back rabbit detected. This content pack is working very nicely. By looking at the process create we take a look at the actual hashes that are generated very nice. We have SHA1, SHA256, MD5 hashes and according to Polo's investigation this denotes the presence of the the actual dropper while this one that happens later is actually the MD5 I would see Elsa see this is the mimic cats you know getting the credentials it's very nice but because Sysmos also give us file names we can actually look for indicators of uh, compromise. For example, we can look for CSC C dot dat from a search for it. Well, actually, I need to clear this filter. Uh, oh, yep, and this is an indicator of compromise. We can actually look for, uh, according to what Polo mentioned, the PCI is another indicator of compromise. That should be some of the file names, and I'm sure it is. It's very nice. We can even actually look for the actual worm that is involved in the propagation, which is in pop. Let's see if we find that one. There it is. And actually, this uh, was actually associated with one of the offenses. We can actually open the actual. Uh, events in here and see the, the actual details and here it is this is this content pack is working like a charm let's actually investigate this further while the machine is performing its encryption let's actually run the task scheduler in here because According to what Polo told me, oh, you see, the machine is actually shutting down by itself. There was a task schedule for a scheduled shutdown. I didn't even have time to see it on the task schedule, but we actually saw it uh, uh, working. Hacemos login. Sí, lo que pasa es que primero, o sea, esto es esperado. Tiene un primero. Como 10 minutos. Sí. Sí. Y va a haber otra muestra action. Task scheduler muestra los actions. Y uh -huh. behavior, this is what actually Polo predicted that will happen. And the, 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 the malware sometimes schedule 
two shutdowns. Let's actually see if we can see in the task scheduler if the malware has already placed some actions in here. And actually we can see in the task schedule here that this Viserion 3, whatever it is that the malware author created, is actually has scheduled another shutdown. And as Polo predicted this, this thing sometimes does a like a fast uh, shutdown and restart, and then there's another one that comes later, and after that you get the deadly uh, look at that, is a it, we have a it's in an hour from now, we actually will get the machine to reboot and get the dreaded uh, message that all the file has been encrypted and is asking, is asking for the ransomware. And if we go to the offenses tab, we see our nice uh, bad rabbit offense we can actually display the rules and these are the actual rules that contributed to the offense and I wanted to show the the rules because this is actually very complementary this is part of the bad rabbit package but these other ones are actually abnormalities that the sysmon rules because we also have the sysmon package in here also detected. So you see that even if we wouldn't have had the bad rabbit with the nice, uh, the nice, the very nice uh, file hashes and file names that denote the presence of bad rabbit, we could have detected that there was a malware here because it's doing all this, you know, bad behavior that the Sysmon content pack also detects. Very nice. I think it is time for actually getting. Uh, putting this machine down, I'm going to actually revert to the snapshot to make sure that this doesn't contaminate anything else. So that uh, that VM is down and we have all the nice data here. Well, actually, this wasn't planned, but I see that Watson has not investigated this event. I have opened the network on the machine. Let's actually see what, what Watson has to say about it actually investigated this is going to take probably two or three minutes I'm going to pause the video until that the result from Watson comes back well the result came back that didn't take long and actually this is very exciting let's actually take a look at it whoa take a look at that visualization in here and here it is you know it's really detecting the bad rabbit is here let's actually interpret this nice graph in a little bit more detail. Actually, if we take a look at these, these actually the, are the three hashes, the MD5, SHA256, and SHA1. And here's the, the nomenclature on the hash. And notice that in gray is the information that is part of my offense. And in blue is the information that Watson found for me, and it's actually telling me, you know, because of this hash that is actually being selected on the references. We have hits here and here, and here's the documentation that say that this is the, the actual uh, bad rabbit by virtue of the actual hash involved in it. This is very nice. Look at this. Let's take a look at this hash in here. And notice that the, these are the hashes that were sent. Actually, probably SHA two fifty six, uh, SHA one, and MD five. And Watson is selecting this one. Let's actually open it up and see. Well, in actually saying that you know these are the two sources that Trend Micro, and this is the reference from Trend Micro. This is the reference from Panda, and both both uh, actually coincide with it and this is the actual dropper of the malware this is very nice and in here 
we actually see in this particular hash, this is the actual hash that performed the actual encryption. And here we have three references, three micro and panda again, but also a reference from FireEye. Well, this is actually a good time saver. One thing that is important to mention is that when you set your Watson, you need to make sure that you are sending to Watson the actual hashes of it. So if we go here to Watson, let me show you what we actually did here on the property mapping. And notice that we are sending the MD5 hash, the uh, import hash, uh, SHA1, SHA256. So you need to make sure that this information is actually sent uh, to Watson for actually getting a hit. I mean, and, and again, uh, the more hashes, the more that you do with hashes in your environment, the better you're going to be on detecting real attacks and avoiding uh, false positives.